Good Sunday morning, everyone. Taking a live look out over Horse That's Tooth beautiful. Reservoir. How picture perfect a is that? Happy Sunday, everyone. Wow. <laughs> look, loving that. Absolutely. The sun is coming up. We are looking forward to a little bit of a warm up. Thank you so much for spending a part of your Sunday with us. And you should hear along with Mark and Greg. That looked a little bit different than what we saw <laughs> Just yesterday. Just a little bit. We couldn't see anything yesterday, Greg. <laughs> I know. Visibility was like less than a half a mile. <laughs> it was pretty bad. We could see that tree, though. We did. On we saw the, the one tree. Side. That was our only we comparison that point. Sunrise this Morning. I think so. Well, after yesterday, yeah, we it's sure did. <laughs> no, it, it was an indoor day. Yeah, yeah very much so. <laughs> I hope but you today's spend nicer. Yeah, today's today's much nicer, much nicer. Upper 50s, lower 60s for today. Increased sunshine on the way for us, so we're not going to be dealing with the cloud cover. And I encourage you to get outside, of course, because we have big changes coming starting tomorrow evening. And temperatures are going to be dropping into the 40s by the middle of this week, and we also have rain on the way. Great news because eh, things are starting to get a little bit dry, especially out towards the east. Let's get a look at that forecast for us as the HD Doppler radar showing quiet conditions for us throughout much, if not all of Colorado. Temperatures right now not too bad whatsoever. We're starting out in the upper 20s, a little bit warmer than where we were yesterday at this time. And by this afternoon, it's going to be much warmer than where we were yesterday. Sunny skies dominate the area. Winds aren't going to be too bad either coming out of the east anywhere between 5 to 10 miles per hour. And then overnight low temperatures tonight on the mild side too, only dropping down into the middle 30s. High temperatures for tomorrow back in the upper 50s and lower 60s. But as I said before, big changes are on the way and that's going to bring some rain, possibly even some snow for the northern mountains and cooler temperatures too. I'll give you the details coming up. Greg, thank you. We want to give you a heads up if you're coming back from the mountains today or heading up shortly for a last day of skiing. The right lane of eastbound I-70 will be closed at the bridge right near Loveland US 6 uh, Loveland Pass. This is the same spot that we saw that wild car accident earlier this year, just a, about a month and a half ago when a camper hit a pothole and started rolling like you see there on your screen. Lots of dangerous potholes have been reported here as drivers exit the tunnel heading downhill back towards Denver. CDOT began emergency repairs on the bridge earlier this month, but have been aware of this back since early or this year. That uh, emergency repair had to stop due to weather. They're now expecting traffic to start backing up as drivers approach the Eisenhower Tunnel. That lane closure starts at noon today and could last up to 24 hours. It is a prank that is feeding off of our worst fears. And throughout the month of February, at least 17 schools got threatening calls about a school shooting. Many were accompanied by sounds of gunshots and real police responses. Those turned out to be fake. They were a hoax. And this Colorado lawmakers will be discussing making those hoax a felony. Now, the state's Division of Homeland Security and Emergency Management says Colorado has experienced more than 60 major swatting incidents since January of last year. 41 of them occurred this year alone. Arnold Hanuman, the de deputy director of the Colorado District Attorney's Council, says that the council supports the bill that would add false reporting of a mass shooting or active shooter in a public or private place as a class six felony. Well, it's critically important for us to acknowledge the seriousness of this offense and the harm that it causes both to individuals and the community more broadly. Meanwhile, the Colorado Criminal Defense Bar is worried about the impact that this may be having on younger people. It shouldn't be our primary reaction to any societal problem to criminalize, to create new crimes, to increase criminal penalties, to try to incarcerate people because that's not getting at the root of the problem. The House Education Committee is set to take this bill up on Thursday. Family and friends gathered yesterday afternoon remembering a young father who was shot and killed earlier this week. 18 year old Richie Lovato was shot in the area of West 14th and Meade on Monday. That's where his family decided to hold that vigil. Police say the investigation into Lovato's death is still in its early stages. His family says he was one of a kind and his humor and laugh was so contagious. And the father of a little one-year-old boy, there's now a $2,000 reward that's being offered for more information about his death. The deputies in Arapahoe County are investigating a suspicious death at the streets on South Glen. The Arapahoe County Sheriff's Office says they found a 61-year-old woman in the parking garage around 9.30 Saturday morning. She was taken to the hospital where she died. Deputies are calling the woman's death suspicious since they don't know how she died. They are expecting more information about her death to be released in the coming days. We told you about this story yesterday and want to give you an update now. Deputies still need your help finding whoever threw rocks 
at cars on Wednesday night in Jefferson County. Ultimately, it killed a young woman. The reward for information has increased now to $17,000. Alexa Bartell was driving home from work near the Rocky Flats Wildlife Refuge when a car when someone threw a rock at her car, killing her. Several other drivers were hit by rocks, causing minor injuries. Each of the numbers that you see there on that map is a location where another driver was hit. Deputies are asking for the public's help now. They say they'll take any information. Nothing is insignificant. Colorado leaders are reacting to the Supreme Court's decision to allow Mifepristone to stay on the market for now. The court's decision still allows access to the to the abortion pill in states where abortion is legal. Colorado's Democratic Governor Jared Polis says individual freedoms are respected and protected in Colorado. The governor says he wants to make sure that does not get jeopardized, but the battle over the abortion pill is not over yet. It now goes back to the Fifth Circuit Federal Appeals Court. A three judge panel is set to hold a hearing that is on May 17th and then issue a decision sometime after. There is not a deadline for the Fifth Circuit to rule. Most of the judges on that court are conservative, but we don't know which three will be hearing the case. But the Supreme Court's order on Friday maintains that the status quo is keeping the abortion pill widely available. How about them buffs? The snow in Boulder made for a beautiful blanket over the Fols over Folsom Field yesterday. But nothing was going to stop CU's spring game, the first sold out spring game ever here in Colorado. That's not necessarily a surprise. Not a whole lot of people usually come to the spring game, except for this year. Crews began early to clear it all out. The snow didn't matter to fans. They still brought the energy in 30 degree weather with more than 47,000 fans in attendance, all to see a scrimmage for a football program that has truly come to life since the hiring of Deion Sanders. That attendance number is more than the last nine CU spring games combined. Everyone is crediting the prime effect, Coach Prime for that. This is not a game, this is the team playing against each other. You see this excitement? This is like, you, you can't hardly believe it. This is off the charts. Coach, Coach Prime's gonna make it happen. One person has just completely changed Boulder in like a huge way. I have people that have never hit me up for tickets are all of a sudden hitting me up for tickets. People didn't know about it last year. You'd go into class and are you going to the spring game? No, not at all, don't even know what it is. And then this year we are sold out and on ESPN. We're always willing to take new bandwagon fans. The bandwagon is always open. It's bigger than Boulder. Like the whole area Seriously. is just like energized for, for CU. I, I, CU is probably going, yeah, we made the right hire. Yeah. We haven't even stepped on the football. Exactly, the right? Season game. Wow. And can you imagine how much money that's making them? Oh my gosh. I 7, mean, people. They wanted eyes on the program and now spring game. They lots got their and lots wish. of eyes. Our Luck area, yeah. <laughs> Luckily, our ill or pseudo was there yesterday as well. What a difference a year makes. Not even six months removed from a one win season, Folsom Field was packed to the gills on a snowy Saturday and was the star of the college football world. I was amazed. I, 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 I didn't know that it would be like that, but the energy, um, just walking out the locker room with the, with the team, it was unbelievable. It was a moment. It was one of those moments that you would never forget. The excitement and on-field product was cause for celebration, like this one from Shador Sanders after he ran in a seven-yard touchdown. Sanders runs it in for a touchdown, Colorado. So what happens, the band was right there. I think it's just memory, like something just happened. Like the band was right there. I'm like, okay, I start doing that. Then they actually start playing. I'm like, damn, <laughs> first time controlling a band for real. So now. Nah. It was hopefully enough to impress the 70 recruits visiting Boulder, not deterred from Mother Nature's untimely attack. National TV is showing snow in the spring. That's not good. But, you know, but everybody, <laughs> people use that recruit against us, but with the fan base and everybody that was there, I'm pretty sure they said, hey, man, this is all right. Sell my jersey, bro. Saw a little glimpse of Peggy there. Peggy, the 98-year-old super fan. She was walked out onto the field with Coach Sanders and kicked the ball off to start the game. That's amazing. Coach Prime said at the end of the game, he's like, she was the MVP. Oh, yeah. She was the MVP. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Kim Christensen has done a bunch of stories yeah. with her. So if you're interested, she's got quite the story. Her twin sister who sadly 
passed away a couple years ago, was a huge CU fan as well. And it's so cool to see the new regime at CU. Yeah. Kind of take her in and say, Embrace yeah, her, we yeah. We want to be around you. We want to rally around you. That's a loyal fan. Yeah. <laughs> want to take you outside real quickly. We are looking forward to a warm-up. Greg is saying, though, enjoy it while it lasts. He's going to have your full forecast right after the break.